Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Lady Poe Designs. It's Erin. I've got quite a few projects lined up. I didn't upload last week, so I'm going to combine them all into one. So this is a little bit longer of a video. So hang in there with me, guys. But it's spring. I love it. And we've got a lot of really pretty spring projects. So let's dive into the prettiness. First up, we've got a little chair that my husband got from his work. It actually came from an elementary school, but I thought it would be super cute to turn into a plant stand. So we're going to start with the clear salvation solution. And just a tip, designate a brush for this stuff if you're going to use it because it wrecks brushes. Just letting you know. Then we're going to go in with Kissing Booth by DIY. And I'm just going to paint the back rails of the chair and then everything on the bottom down like all the rungs all the crossbars everything even the bottom of the seat and then we're going to go in with tarnished pearl and cover the entire chair everything everything that was painted pink everything that is still wood everything we're going to give it all two coats of tarnished pearl. So after I get those two down, we're gonna use some new decoupage paper that I've never used before. It's called Neutral Florals. It's by Redesign. This paper was really interesting to me. It almost felt like cloth. I don't know if it's rice paper or what, but it almost has like little holes in it. So I found out very quickly that using the liquid patina, it works, but you kind of need something thicker because it needs to penetrate through. It almost feels like fabric, but it's not. Um, so it was very interesting, but I laid it down just the same because this is all new to me. So I laid it down with the liquid patina thinking that it would work. And it did work fairly well. Um, so I laid it down as usual, just doing the normal stripes that we always do. But I switched over to this 3D matte gel because it is a really thick consistency and I could smush it into the fab. Oh, I keep wanting to call it fabric, but it's not. Um, but I, I put a layer of that on it. So when it was dry, it still sanded off as usual, just like regular decoupage paper. So I took my zip sander around the edges and got all the excess off. Um, it still was very fibrous like rice paper kind of. Um, but like I said, it was a little bit thicker and it felt like cloth, but it's not. And <laughs> I know I'm probably not explaining this very well, but it was just really, it was, it was different. It wasn't something that I wouldn't use again, but it was just different. So you see on the back, I went straight in with the gel and used my finger and just kind of squished it in and it would come up through the holes in the actual material and bind that way. And then I would just put a, a coat over top. And it, I found that it, it worked better that way. So I did the same to the back, laid it down, and just kind of smushed it in with my finger. Um, I just went along and cut off the excess. I did end up sanding the, the rest off. I didn't show that. I figure I showed it once. I'm not going to show it again. Um, but then I took it outside and I sanded it because it, you know, clay paint, produces a lot of dust. So I did a scuff sand on the rest of the chair, but then I'm gonna go in with just plain white DIY wax and just give it a coat. Cause I just wanna smoke out the kissing booth um, just to make it not as bright. And I wanna antique it out. So everywhere where there's paint, plus it's gonna seal that clay paint. So then everywhere that I didn't put the wax I'm going to go in with Dixie Bell's Gator Hide because if somebody puts a plant on this I want it to be waterproof I want it you know I want you to be able to wipe it off 
but look how it turned out. I'm so happy with this chair from where it started to how it looks now. How freaking cute is this? I love it, guys. Tell me what y'all think in the comments. So next, we've got a little hanging flower pot. I bought a bunch of these for my wedding and I've, I've got to use them. So we're going to go in with aviary and some salt wash and make a little concoction and stipple on just one coat over the entire bucket. Um, just to give it some texture, I like the design that's on it. It's got little hearts on the top and then the little ribbings going around. Uh, I do do the inside as well. Um, I don't plan on putting a real plant in it, so um, I'm going to take liquid patina and seal that paint. And even if you did want to put a real plant in this, it does have a hole for drainage. Um, DIY paints are all natural, so I don't think it would hurt it. So I'm going to go in with tarnished pearl and do a top coat of that. Actually, I do. I think I do two coats. Yeah, I do two coats over the aviary. And then I'm going to wet distress it back to have like all of those little ridges. And you see the little hearts on the top? They're so cute. I wipe off those. I wipe off all the ridges and I go around the edge and wet distress all that back. And I do the same. So I do end up sealing it with a dishwashing Mod Podge just in case somebody does put a real plan in it so you can water it. So then we're going to flip over. I got a lot of these real wood eggs off of Amazon last year. And I thought these would be really cute to go into the basket. So I grab a whole bunch of the molds um, from IOD. I got the... The primitive mold is what I use mostly, and then I got the cameo mold. So I think I grabbed out a lot of them because I wasn't sure which ones I was going to use, but I think I just used the primitive and the cameo. So I got a couple of redesigned ones that I thought I was going to use that I didn't know where I was going to go with these eggs. So I just pulled out a whole bunch of them just to see where my inspiration was going to take me. So I started with the, with the primitive. Get the eggs out of the way. And I'm just going to put cornstarch through the entire mold because, like I said, at this point, I wasn't sure which elements I was going to use. So... I just dusted the entire mold. So I'm going to start out using, I think, the outline. And of course, I use my favorite creative paper clay. Yeah, I go for the little trimming on the end. And using the rim of the mold. I love IOD molds because of that rim. Get y'all closer in here. Flip it over and just kind of peel it back. And that cornstarch just lets it fall right out. And I get the egg. And this is just raw wood. I didn't do anything to prep it. And this is tight bond wood glue that I have in my little squeeze bottle. It's just easier for my hand to squeeze that bottle. Um, but I'm going to put the little uh, trimming and kind of separate the little egg into two, a front and a back. And 
get it all down, wipe off the excess glue. And then I'm just going to go through and fill in some of the other elements. Like I said, I wasn't sure what I was going to use, but I was just going to make just some and pop them out and say, okay, I'm going to use this one, this one, this one. <laughs> so I just made some to set aside. I made a couple of the birds, some of the leaves. I made a heart, a couple of the rabbits, of course. Got to make the rabbits because they're just cute. And then I got cameo mold. And there's this one little one that has a little, a bunch of little flowers. And I thought it looked really springy. So I made two of those. And I chose that one to go on with the little trimmings part. So I'm going to put one of those on either side. So it doesn't matter which way you face the little egg. And then on another one, I'm going to put two of the birds, one on each side. Another one, I'm going to wrap the rabbit around it. At first, I was, I, I was going to put it long ways, and then I was like, nope, I don't like that. And I took it off and switched it. <laughs> and then I got one of the hearts and put the leaves um, kind of like a laurel pattern, you know, you know, putting the leaves up beside it, framing it in a way. And then put the other rabbit on another egg. I mean, I'm going pretty fast because we're just gluing down molds. But we're going to use Farm Fresh Mint Chip, Petticoat Pink, Petal Pusher, and French Millinery. And we're going to get the other three that I didn't paint. We're going to use Napkins to Decoupage. So I'm going to get Petal Pusher with a little bit of salt wash. And just put a couple of coats down making sure to get into all the little nooks and crannies of our molds and make sure it's fully coated. And I'm going to do the same thing with all the other colors. So you'll see probably the front and oh, and that one I had a little bit of paint left. So I have these little 3D resin birds that my husband printed for me. So I use a couple of those because I have excess paint and I'm not going to waste that paint. So I paint a couple of birds too. I think I use that one in the French millinery. Um, then we're going to go in with petticoat pink and paint the heart one. Salt wash. And I'm just really working it into that mold because I'm just going to do white wax on these. So I'm, I really want to get good coverage. And the French millinery over the rivet. And yeah, I had excess paint, so I got another little birdie that was facing a different way. And then Farm Fresh which is one of my favorites. I love this color. I love the way it dries down. It looks completely different. This was one of the first colors I bought from DIY. If you're new to DIY, definitely start with this color. I would strongly recommend it. It is such a beautiful color. Oh. Look how it dries down completely different. I think it's so cool. I left this in because I wanted to show you. This is the mint chip, and you can see I've used it a lot, but it's dried on the sides. So I use my stir stick, and I take that stuff that's up on the top, and I push it down into the paint that's in there because this is clay-based paint. Right. So when you reconstitute it, it will go back to a liquid form. So I push it down in there and mix it up a little bit and then spray. This is filtered water that I put in my spray bottles. Spray some water in it, shake it up. And the next time I go into my mint chip, those are all going to, for the most part, be dissolved. So 
Just to let you know, if you have chunks like that sticking to the top of your cans or anything on your DIY, push them back down into your paint. Don't throw them away. So we're going to coat this one with the mint chip. And then I'm going to go in with the DIY French linen and cover the three that we're going to decoupage. So these are the napkins we're going to use. And of course, on every napkin, it's either going to have two or three layers and you just want that top layer. So we're going to separate this out. And this one was a little difficult to get, but see, it's got this one's got three layers. So you just want that top one. I'm going to take this off. And I was just going to wrap this around it, but I realized the flowers halfway down. Oh, and see the second layer? You can faintly see the pattern. So we're going to keep that if we ever want like a distressed look on something. But we're going to go in with liquid patina and put this down on the egg. But you can see halfway down the napkin, the blooms go towards each other. So I'm going to separate them because I want the blooms to be going the same way on the egg when I lay it down. So I separate it in half, and then I just go ahead and cut it into strips. Well, we'll not cut it, but you know, that's water in that little pin. But I just separate it into pin, or into uh, strips to lay it down easier. And of course, in Aaron fashion. I did not turn my camera back on. So we're going straight into the purple napkin. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Um, so we're laying down the little blossoms. You can see to the right, I did already do the, the little yellow egg, but it's just like this one. You're just laying down the liquid patina and then placing the pieces of the napkin where you want them. I'm kind of piecing together blossoms where I want them and with a very light touch I'm just rubbing out the little bubbles and the wrinkles of the napkin and I mean very light touch because this is napkins this is not uh, decoupage paper so if you rub too hard it, you'll just rub it off your surface <laughs> so I place some of the butterflies on top of some of the blossoms and I basically anywhere where I see white I just Put a little flower or a little butterfly or you know what whatever looks good to me so keep filling that in this is the greenery one y'all have so many napkins i need to <laughs> i need to put some up i've i got my website ready so i need to set it up so y'all can look at it and put like some napkin bundles together or something because I've got so many. I've got like a crate full. But I'm just going to set these or separate this out. Take out all the little blooms. And the same way we did the purple one, I'm going to do the same thing on this one. I'm just going to individually lay down each little twig. I don't know what these are, twigs, but... They're not blossoms, but greenery sprigs. There we go. I knew it would come to me. Uh, it's just different greenery. Um, I know they sold at Dollar Tree, they sold um, a tissue paper that looked like this at one point. Um, but I got these off of Amazon for like $7, and it came in a huge pack. But I'm just going to layer these up. So now I'm going to take the liquid patina and put a coat on all of the eggs that we painted all of the colors just to seal that paint because we're going to go in with the white wax and I don't want the white wax to overtake the color. I just want it to very subtly set on top and create a halo around the molds. If I just went straight in with the white wax on just the straight clay base paint, it would go on very heavy and it would overtake the color and it would almost be completely white. So if you want it to just be a subtle 
color of white, put a top coat or a liquid patina or some kind of sealer on it beforehand. I do the same thing to the two little birdies that I painted as well. So we're going to give them a brushing of liquid patina. Aren't those cute? I love those. And you'll see two other ones later in this video. Um, so we're going to take DIY's white wax. And like I said, we're just mainly going to focus on the molds. I'm going to work them all the way down into those little nooks and crannies. And I want the molds to have like a little halo of white. I do brush some on the rest of the eggs themselves just to kind of blend. But I almost want them to look dusty. Kind of like they've been sitting there for a little bit, but not dirty. Aren't they cute? Can't really see them on the lighter ones on the screen, but I do the same thing to the little birdies so they'll match. I love them. They're so cute. And then, of course, on the decoupage eggs, I still wanted to put a coat of the white wax on them, and I'm totally not in frame. I'm sorry. Just to match the hue of all the other ones. But y'all, look. I love the basket. I didn't want to put any kind of like moss or anything in them, but so I put a whole bunch of lace and fabric. I just wanted it to be soft and pretty. But I love how these turned out. Tell me what y'all think in the comments. Also got a video of the two little birdies. Okay, so now we've got Doss Clay, and this is a Prima mold. Um, I wanted to cast two of the bunny heads, and then one each of the leaf sprigs that go off to the sides. So we're gonna. Get two of the bunny molds, or bunny heads, sorry. <laughs> and then two of the, one each of the leaf elements that they have. The premium molds are a little bit harder to work with. They're thinner and they don't have that little micro rim. So if they ever add that to their molds, they'd be great. But they are a little bit thinner. So I'm going to glue this up with the same type on wood glue and I've got just a plain white gravy boat that I got from Sammy and we're gonna put a rabbit head on either side and then put the leaves I'm gonna take them and kind of split them in half and frame out the head on either side of the boat So you see it falls apart, but that's okay. You just stick it where you think it goes, because <laughs> I don't even know if it went there, and just let it dry. And then on the other side, we're going to kind of mimic that. The greenery isn't going to look the same, but that's okay. That's I like that about it. So we're going to let that dry, and then we're going to go in with Dixie Belle Slick Stick. And we're going to put two coats on this entire thing because this gravy boat was really, really slick. And I think this is the only the second time I've used this slick stick and I was actually very impressed with it. It worked very well. Okay, we're going to use Gravel Road by DIY. Quite a bit of it, actually, and quite a bit of salt wash. And we're going to stipple it in the inside. I use the slick stick on the outside and the inside in this. And because I want this to look like concrete. Um, 
So we're going to go over this entire gravy boat twice. We're going to do one coat and then the second coat is just to fill in anything that I might have missed. And what's great about salt wash is anywhere on the molds where it didn't fully stick to the surface, you can press that in and cover all of those little gaps. So when it's fully dry, I'm going to go in with liquid patina and seal everything. So now these are the other two that I was telling you about. They're big old birdies and they're quite heavy. Um, these took a while to print. We're going to go in with Queen Bee and Hey Sailor and paint these up. The big one I'm going to do with Hey Sailor, it's not going to stay this dark because we're going to do a different element on it. But to start, we're going to put a coat of Hey Sailor on him. And y'all love how these turned out. And then Queen Bee on the smaller one. This one is a this one's a little bit bigger than the two that we painted with the eggs. So we're going to break out the folk art crackle medium and go over the Hey Sailor one. With very little strokes, you know, remember you don't want to overwork this medium. It will not work. So the less you work it, the better it will crackle. So I'm going in with a very heavy hand and putting a very heavy coat. Letting that dry. I'm doing everything, all of these in steps, so I might flip-flop back and forth from each project, but this is a remnant of a paper towel that I have. Um, I've got the little birdie that we painted with in Queen Bee, and I'm fussy cutting these sunflowers out. We're going to take the liquid patina and I'm going to wrap the sunflower around the belly of this bird and lay it down. I'm going to smush out all the little wrinkles and everything by, with my thumb and just mostly let my brush lay it down, but I'm just poking it into all of his little feathers and his feet. And then just very carefully smoothing it out. Look how cute. Now there are some purple flowers on that same napkin. So I fussy cutted those out. And got a few of those little blossoms. I think like three or four. And I'm going to lay those going up his back. And then one right on the top of his head. Look how cute he is. I love him. Okay, vintage linen from DIY. We're going to do very short strokes just so we'll get a really good crackle. And you can see I'm putting a lot of paint on my brush so I don't have to drag a lot of paint off. Look, it's already crackling and I haven't even finished like <laughs> even painting the bottom. So if you put it on thick, this stuff works very well. So I've let it completely dry. I'm going to seal it in with liquid patina because I love how that crackle worked. Look at all that, it's so cool. This is another napkin that I just had remnants of. It's just all different color sunflowers. And they're very light blues and greens and browns. Um, so I'm just gonna lay little sunflowers all over his belly and back. But it's that light blue I thought would look so pretty with that Hey Sailor popping through. I just thought it would, I just thought it would look so cool. So on the back, I'm going to put one of the little brown ones and just work it down with this brush. The, I really, I found this brush in one of my kits. It's, I don't know what kind of brush it is, but it, 
it's kind of longer at the tip and it's missing some bristles. I, I don't even know what kind of uh, technique it's used for, but it's great for decoupaging and I love it. So I put another one on his little tail. And then one on his little foot. And then I'm going to put one going across his head and over his left eye. And then there's one more little bitty leaf. I had one leaf out of all those that I saved. And I'm going to connect that to the little floral on the back. I tried to space them out to where there was very little white showing, but I still wanted some of the crackle. Oh, I had one more spot, so I picked out like a light green to cover that portion of the wing. So we're going back to the gravy boat <laughs> and taking DIY's clear wax and DIY's uh, decrepit dirt or the dark and decrepit dirt <laughs> I think that's what it's called but it's the you're basically just putting dirt on uh, your project so anywhere where I'm putting the wax I'm then putting a dust a dust dark and decrepit dust that's what it is oh my god um, you would think I would look this stuff up and have it ready in front of me before I yeah well yeah but I just kind of brush it all over uh, I wanted it to look like, you know, where dirt would naturally fall. Um, but I'm going to put this on first, let it dry, and then I'm going to come back in with a clean brush and brush off everything that didn't stick. So you'll see when you see it in the, when I actually go to put florals in it, it's brushed off quite, quite a bit. So it doesn't stay like that. See, I've brushed off quite a bit of it. So we're going to go in with some florals. A lot of these are from Dollar Tree. Some of them are from Amazon. These, my husband found at work. They were going to throw them away. I decided not to use them. I went back into my stash. And I'm going to use these. I don't know what they're called. They didn't have a name on them. They look like some kind of like white lavender. Um... I honestly don't know what they are, but they were really pretty. I'm cutting all of these off of the picks. I don't ever leave my picks hold whole. Um, these are like trumpet flowers. I thought they were really pretty. I also got these off of Amazon. So I'm going to hot glue just a piece of floral foam to the bottom. And then start layering in flowers. Y'all, I am not a florist. I do this by my eye and what I think looks good. So I sped this up a lot. If y'all want to slow it down, y'all can do it in the toolbar, toolbar below. I know it's kind of skippy because I sped it up a lot. But I put kind of like the hanging um, florals on the bottom because I wanted it to drape over some of the bowl. But I put those in, and then I put the trumpet flowers in, the lavender flowers, some of the little daisies, or they're not daisies, like berry ones. Like I basically just stuck them everywhere where I thought it looked good. And I put some of the cattails, the pinks, and the purples. I got those at Dollar Tree. I was so excited when I saw those. Oh my gosh, those are so cute. But I put some of those in. I love those. Those little, they're like little berries, but they have little daisy-like looking flowers on them. They're really pretty. I need to look at the tag. I don't know what they were called. But those were from Dollar Tree. And those were this season, so they're still there. Um, but yeah, I just keep filling in until it looks good to me. And y'all, I am so happy with this. Look how it turned out. How cute is this little planter? 
And this was just a plain white gravy boat. And look how pretty it is. It looks like it's been sitting out in the yard for a couple years and it's gotten dirty and yucky, but I love how that looks. And the florals look amazing. And then I also took a little video of the two little birdies, which turned out super cute. How cute are they? I love how those birds turned out. They're so cool. Okay, so very last thing we're going to do is this is just a very plain wood frame. And we're going to use Roy cycled antler blocks. You've got a horizontal one and a vertical one, right? So I'm going to separate them because I'm going to use the horizontal one. And I'm going to go with my water pen and just kind of take off the sides to not make it a straight edge. So I'm going to go over or go around the entire um, picture. And then this backer on the frame, I'm going to paint the front and the back, the vintage linen from DIY, just to give it a base coat because I didn't want to leave it brown. So then we're going to take some drop cloth and I'm going to lay the picture over it so I just know how much to cut. I'm going to cut it to the size of the board first and then I'm going to go through and cut like an inch from the edge of the board on all sides. So for on the top, bottom, all four sides, I'm going to cut it an inch. And then I'm going to fray it out, like take strings out and make the each side look frayed. I take my little Cricut um, iron, try to iron out as many of the, the creases and fold lines as I can, but those go away and... Of course, I did not turn my camera back on. Y'all, I'm so bad at that. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I didn't turn my camera back on while putting the actual paper down on the drop cloth at first. But just like any time we lay down uh, decoupage paper, I did it in strips. Now I'm just going back over it with liquid patina. And I wanted to make this a very thick coat because this is on drop cloth. So I need it to actually penetrate through the paper and actually stick to this drop cloth, right? So I am putting this on very generously. And you'll actually see that I switch over to Mod Podge because I got stingy with my liquid patina and I was using a lot of it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm using a lot of my good stuff, so let's switch over to the stuff I know I can just go get at Walmart. So I switched over to Mod Podge and flipped it over after that was dry on the front, and I soaked the back of this drop cloth with Mod Podge. Like it, I wanted it to be very, very sturdy and not move. At the very end, um, after that dried, I flipped it back over, put another layer of Mod Podge on the front, and you can see it's a little bit um, wrinkly right now. We'll fix that. But I just wanted it not to come off <laughs> that backer. But while that's drying, we're going to take dark and decrepit, some weathered wood, take a little bit of that, pour that in, and then I'm going to add some filtered water. We're going to make our own stain, and we're going to stain this 
um, frame because this is just straight wood. I didn't want to put any kind of elements on the frame because I wanted it to stand alone. But look at the wood grain on this frame. It's so pretty. It's solid wood. The fr I think the frame is beautiful on its own. So I didn't think it needed anything. But you'll see um, in one of these shots, you'll see like the actual, when I put the stain on, you see the wood grain pop and oh my gosh it's like you see that is why <laughs> I did not want to cover this up because it's so gorgeous right here look at that see I love wood and it's sad that I'm sitting here salivating over wood but you know what it's so pretty okay see you see all the wrinkles on this right this turns out to feel like leather y'all it's so cool well, I take a piece of parchment paper and I take my Cricut iron and I'm going to iron this down flat. And I'm going to do it all over the, the whole piece, right? So I'm basically ironing out all those little wrinkles and look how it comes out completely flat. So cool. So cool. Now I'm going to go around the edges because of the Mod Podge, it made all those little frayed edges really hard. So I'm taking the sandpaper and kind of loosening up those fibers again and getting the Mod Podge off of them so they look, um, I'm not going to say look like fabric again because it is still fabric, but you know what I'm saying, it's getting the Mod Podge off of the fabric so it, it flows freely. And it has that soft texture again. So I'll go around the entire outside of it and just kind of sand um, the Mod Podge off of the fibers. <clears throat> so then we're going to take... The large typeset lettering stamps from IOD and we're gonna put some some letters on there or some letters some type typography on here and I tried using one of the little rollers and I've, I've seen other creators do this it did not work for me I tried and you see, I kept trying and I kept trying and all it did was roll the paint completely off of each stamp. Like it would not stay on the stamp. I don't know if I was doing something wrong. I do not know. So I switched to my JRV stencil brush and just stenciled it on every single letter. letter. It worked fine. It actually turned out really good. <laughs> so I just ended up doing it like that. But we're going to start by laying out this up top. And I'm going to run my finger along every single letter. Make sure it gets good adhesion. Take it off. I'm going to wipe every letter off except for the T because we're going to use that again, of course. The any of the letter sets with IOD only comes with one of each letter. So I'm going to wipe off all the other letters and then ink up the T again. And put that back down, line it up with that grid. I love that grid. That grid helps so much, that carrier sheet. So I got this idea because this is actually my favorite song right now. I listen to country music. Surprise, surprise. Um, but this is my favorite song right now. So you'll see at the end what it's called. But we're going to ink up the next set of letters. And this isn't technically spring, but this is just still a project that I wanted to do. And it meant something to me. So I wanted to include it. And I just, it, I think it turned out really cool. 
So I still wanted to include it. We're going to ink up the T again, lay it down, trace it out with our finger. And then our last let our last word stencil it on. Flip it over. And I kind of offset it. Ink up the O again. Okay, so the back of the, the backer, we're just going to use DIY's clear wax because I wanted this to stay dull because the actual picture is already shiny. So we're going to clear the backer with that and then we're going to go in with Dixie Bill uh, Voodoo All Natural stain because the look I was going for, I could have painted it this color, right? I could have gone with like a sandy blonde or something and painted it this color. However, using this product or using a product like this, it doesn't have to be this, this specific product, I just had it. I wanted it to look almost kind of marbly or splotchy, and I wanted it to look old and weathered and antiqued. And this gave me that look. I didn't want to just brush on um, a different color. So we're going to lay this down and then we're going to use just some, I think that's Eileen's tacky glue. And I put a lot, <laughs> I mean, I try to get, I try to get it on every little portion of the back of this picture. And then flip it over. And then anything that was in arm's reach of me, I put it down because it, by this point, this has already stiffened up. It was hard and it was curling. I could not get it to lay down. So I wanted this the glue to dry, but I couldn't get the edges to lay down. So I had, I had to pull out everything <laughs> and lay down all the sides and let it sit there overnight and let it dry. But hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. So we're gonna take liquid patina and go over where we stamped those letters because that's still raw paint. So if any kind of water or anything touches those, remember, you know, DIY is clay paint. So it can be reconstituted with water. So if water hits that, it could be reconstituted. These are furniture tacks. And the actual tack part on the back is like an inch long. And it would go completely through this board. So I cut them off to where there's just a little bitty barb on them that just goes through the drop cloth and just a tiny bit into this uh, wood backer. So I lay them out the way I want and I kind of spaced them out. I put one at the top and the bottom and not on each side and then just kind of spaced them out from there. And then I'm going to use my Starbond Thick Super Glue, this is my favorite glue, and kind of poke it through the drop cloth and then it'll adhere. So I flip it over. And using my nail gun, I'm going to use that as kind of my way to hold this into the frame. But y'all, I am really proud of this piece. I love the way it turned out. I love that it looks almost like a scroll. It does not look like decoupage paper to me. And I love that. But that's my favorite song right now, Pretty Little Poison. Our... I just love it. I absolutely love it. I love that the frame is just plain. 
So, yeah, I mean, tell me what y'all think. I know this is a long video, so I appreciate y'all stick it in there with me. Um, I know I didn't post last week, but I'm sorry. Um, tell me what y'all think in the comments. Let me know what y'all would want to see in future videos. We're very close to being at 1k subs, which I'm so excited about. But like, subscribe, comment, and remember guys, you're beautiful and you can do hard things. Bye!